Saw the slowing game winning streak was snapped last night by the Cavaliers. The C's led by 22 in the fourth, went on to lose 105 104. Let's take a look at the Ford Big Board built for America, built Ford Proud. This was the biggest blown fourth quarter loss for the Celtics since the 96 97 season. Boston, 93 and 71 with not up 93 71 with nine minutes left. Dean Wade, D Wade, went off for Cleveland, scoring 20 points, going seven for seven, five for five from three. Celtics go on to lose 105 104. So, how do the players feel after the game? In the fourth quarter, we didn't execute. Um, and we got some open looks that didn't go down, but you put yourself in that spot when you don't, when you uh, don't put a team away, don't match the gas. We should have matched the gas when we was up 22. We kind of let it hang around. It was cool. And, you know, comfort will kill you. I think it's healthy. I think it's healthy for us. You know, we. We do have a feeling that they were like, pretty much like we're gonna win every game. We're invincible. We're gonna win this game, no matter what happens. We're like, ah, we got this. A little bit of that feeling is always there, you know. It's, it's maybe healthy, but it's also healthy to get a loss here and there to kind of like, all right, here we go. Let's 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 um, recalibrate a little bit. All right, let's play a little game of big deal or uh, no big deal in the daily thread. Listen, I'm going to go big deal, no big deal, then blowing a 22-point lead. I'm going to honestly say normally I would freak out about this. I'm going to say no big deal. Listen, they would have won 11 in a row. They were about to win 12. Donovan Mitchell wasn't out there. I could see it in their body language. Like when they scored their 20th and 22nd points, especially like they took a close-up shot of Jason Tatum after he went and put them up 22. And he was like, hmm. You know, we got it, kind of lollygagging back. That's not what bothered me the most. We'll get to what bothered me the most in a second. Do you have a problem? Was it a big deal that they blew a 22-point lead on the road in the fourth quarter with only nine minutes remaining? No, I, I would think it would be a bigger deal if this happened, say, tomorrow night against Denver, and they started to play tight, started to play scared, started to really slow it down, and then you saw Denver kind of find a way to, to come back. And then it would be a big deal to me. I, I think you're probably hitting more on it, Trenny, where they, I don't know, just they, they let their foot off the gas. They, they didn't defend whatever we want to call it. That, that was the issue. They took the quarter off. Yeah, it's just. They kind of took the quarter off. Yeah, so here's why it's a big deal to me. Because oh. we're looking at what is this team going to do in the postseason. And you go back to the bubble. Blown leads against Miami, just like this, every other game. You go back to last year's playoffs. You game one against Philly, no Embiid. They're up double digits. They blow that game. Game five against Atlanta, chance to close them out. Up double digits in the second half. Trey Young goes off. They blow that game. Miami. Miami in the conference finals, they have leads in games, double digits again, third quarter, the game where Miami ran off like 40 points in a row. It's a pattern. So, yes, does last night matter in terms of this season and this moment? No. But does it matter in the big picture? Yes, because that's how they keep losing postseason series. But those playoff games to me are where they start playing tight. Or they start, you know, trying to slow it down and just bleeding the clock. They're just hoping for time to run out. That that didn't feel like the situation last night. Last night it was just more lackadaisical than anything else. Yeah, like to me this was just like, man, we've won so many of these. Like we're going to be able to cruise because we've cruised all year long. I'm with Giles. I, this That's one that I do not think is a big deal. There's however, also other things to gripe about. <laughs> however, we're going to get to the things that we do think are a big deal. Let's take a look at some of the – Crunch time numbers for the Celtics. The NBA definition of clutch, and there is an NBA definition of clutch, is the final five minutes of the fourth quarter or overtime when the score is within five points. The Celtics are 18 and nine in those situations, tied for third in the league. But you got to take a little closer look at these numbers um, because the numbers get worse uh, in less time. In one point games in the final minute, the Celtics are four and six. In one point games in the final two seconds, they're two and five. And Jason Tatum in the final five seconds to tie or take the lead. Oh, for five this season. It was unfortunate. Thought I got fouled, but they didn't think I got fouled. And it's tough because we got would have had to tip in. So uh, it's just a weird way to end the game. But you know they always say the game isn't won or lost on the last play. It's a lot of things that we didn't do well um, in that fourth quarter that put us in that position. I mean, I guess he's kind of true, guys. We'd like you to join the conversation by voting in our poll. You know the drill. Go to NBCSportsBoston.com slash early edition, scan the QR code. What is your level of trust in Jason Tatum to deliver in the clutch? Here's what I don't like about that. 
uh, Phil Perry, that answer there from Jason Tatum. Well, you know, I could have been fouled. It wasn't a call. That could have been a tip-in. Maybe, I don't know, don't slowly dribble the ball down the court, not see guys that are open and have maybe a better shot selection than you do in the minute, and don't take a stupid fall-back fadeaway attempt like your Kobe Bryant. I don't like it. I, I don't, like, there's something about him when the pressure is on that he does not deliver, and it started. It's, it's not starting to drive me nuts. It is my biggest fear about this team going into the postseason. Yeah, their ability to execute late in games is a big deal to me. This has been a big deal for some time now, even as they have been rattling off wins. Our guy Chris Forsberg has been as on top of this as anybody. can remember talking to him during All-Star Weekend. Everything is going great for the Celtics, and they looked really strong. And he still had concerns about how they were finishing games, especially against the best teams. And so, yes, when, when the game is within five points, last five minutes, they're one of the best in basketball. But the closer it gets, the later it gets – the worse they get. That, to me, is a troubling trend. They're still going to be the number one seed out of the East. I still think they're going to make the NBA Finals, but this is the kind of thing that will prevent them from being able to eventually hoist that Larry O'Brien trophy is if they can't figure out how to handle these late-game situations. It's Tatum. It's Joe Mazzulla. It's everybody on that roster. They should be sharing the basketball much, much more. That guy, Chris Stapps Porzingis, that we just heard from, needs to touch it way more frequently late in games because when he does, good things tend to happen. And I would say this, as far as whether or not it's a big deal, I mean, philosophically, if, if, if the plan is to just bleed the clock down in that situation, you're in scouting the broadcast. Like, what are they doing? You need to go faster. Go fast. Give yourself an extra chance at a possession because, you know, actually, even if Tatum misses this, Porzingis doesn't have time to tip it in. They, they, he should be going. They should be getting a shot up with 10 seconds to go, a little less than 10 seconds to go, just playing faster. And I know that Joe Mazzulla talked about that after the game, said they needed to go faster, and he even said that he maybe tried to call timeout with 4.6 seconds left. But it's just it's the, fil the, the philosophy of it that I'm more concerned with. It, is this what they plan on doing in playoff games, or do you plan on going fast when you're down in those situations so you give yourself another opportunity? Well, and Tomasi, correct me if I'm wrong, and maybe you wrote this in your article today, or maybe I read it in For Forsberg's article, but, like, when Jason Tatum is aggressive with the ball and he drives the lane, good things happen. I don't understand why he's always hanging back trying to make this, like, I always think in my head is that Michael Jordan shot, you know, and that gets over the Utah Jazz and the crowd goes nuts and you see him kind of, you know, putting up the jump shot. Like, that in my head is what Tatum's trying to do when he should just – I don't know. I feel like they should handle late. He, in particular, should handle late game situations differently. Yeah, I mean, I think you hit it with your earlier comparison. It's Kobe, and we know he loves Kobe and his game. It's always the Kobe one leg out fall away. It's probably the weakest shot in his arsenal. And so the fact that they're always isolating for him to get that shot is a problem for me. I'll just go back. What's the best moment, maybe other than Derek White's putback, in the last five years of playoff games for them? It was that game one buzzer beater against the Nets where everyone touched the ball and Tatum laid it in. It was a layup at the buzzer. If they would just share the ball, like Phil was saying, they'll be in much better shape. Guys, one actually has the most votes in our poll. Somehow with all the other ones, it averages out to a four, but it doesn't seem like people are all that confident in Jason Tatum to make the shot when he absolutely needs to.